this team back. Oh, <laughs> Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Well, hello, welcome back. It doesn't take long before we get ready for game two action. It is Secret going up against OG, the rematch of the Frankfurt final, and very different tempo than what we saw in the previous series where we're treated to E-Home versus EG. That was a slugfest and a brawl. This one, a bit more methodical, but game number one, it was the backbone pick of AM, and uh, and that's Reddit right there. <laughs> but... The, uh, the milestone to all of Dota, of course. Here is now Secret for OG, the star of the draft for Game 2. And uh, a lot of people are thinking the squiggly turn into the who can get Earth Spirit first. This time, though, OG will uh, end out seeing that Secret do have first pick. Yep. No Earth Spirit, or no more Earth Spirit. OG, though, do get the option to go into Invoker, which most parts like a top pick for them, so. Yep. Don't see. Any crazy reason why they wouldn't probably pick it? But we'll see. The bat? Maybe? I don't know. Oh yeah, bat is actually also in the pool. That's... But then you do risk a uh, secret hmm. picking up some like Oracle Soul. And you know, it's still, you know, worthy to know, and this might be just like, common for everyone out there, but... OG, one of those teams that you guys gotta keep getting that wisp again, man. They will pull it out. Also, it, it, there's been a... a teams of... There seems to be kind of divided as to which teams prefer Radiant, which prefer Dire. Uh, this is the second game in a row we see OG on that Radiant side. Mm. But, um, Secret preferring Dire, OG preferring Radiant. I know EG also prefer Radiant. Um, so yeah, there's been... It was, it was funny because it was the EG versus OG game where there was some confusion in their best of two as to who got choice in game two. Because EG chose in game one and then game two because he game one, they got asked again and PPD's like, like what? I had chosen game one, they gave game two, and they're like... The summit rules or something? Yeah, but that, it, like, in a best of two, that doesn't make sense, because you both yeah. get one game. In a best of three, it's like, well, oh, it's fine no. to let the loser choose, because there's still a game three, oh, but... Ooh, a Western team putting early priority uh, into a faceless void? My mm. goodness. It's good, great defense against Evoker, which is... Well, yeah, great against Evoker, you get your faceless void. Witch Doctor combo, I mean, I can't fault them on the grab, and time... Wait, we were saying it in the last track, time dilation, yeah, against Evoker. Yep. Very, very good. Great Witch. pick there for Secret. And Witch Doctor has some <laughs> capabilities against Invoker too. Just having Cask against Ford Spirits, you get that extra long stun duration. Makes dealing with them a little bit easier. If you ever by yourself and like Invoker split pushing and you TP with Witch Doctor, you're just instantly dead to Ford Spirits as you can see. Them. So it's a little, it's not like a counter by names, but it's something at least handy that Witch Doctor has going for him. Yeah. It is pressure though that they make sure you have to actually get the invoker because let's say faceless boy which are committed on everyone else invoker from the outset of a chrono can be very very scary yep. very easily used against them and now coming out for the second phase secret get rid of the, the terror blade and then follow up with the moon shaker and og will ban out the zeus which always seemed to be just the go-to ban after faceless void has been picked Regardless of Eastern or Western team, so they take it out. Mm. Well, let's see. And so OG, like, like, like the Earth Spirit, the Tusk, some of those big crit heroes are both banned out. Curious to see where he goes, or if he plays something like the Avenger, they just go for like Avenge, Dazzle, or Undying, another big fly hero. 
But Lynch definitely to fly as far as playing that five position defensive support that can just save a teammate when they're in a bit of a pinch. That's interesting. What what is Crit going to be playing here? Not Wisp, not Tusk, mm -hmm. not Earth Spirit. Those used to be that that would be his new Holy Trinity, I'd imagine. Yeah. Jakiro? That's a Oh yeah, the, the Crit, crit Jakiro. Jakiro. It'd be pretty good uh, against the Faceless Void. Just slam Macro Pyro right across it. They're not going to yeah. want to fight inside the thing. And he's a tip of Yule's candidate, so yeah, I don't know. Ben OD. I wonder if they're planning on picking up the Batrider. Like having. Because if they were going to go for the Nyx, I think they don't care about banning OD there. Which to me makes me think they're more likely to pick Bat than the Nyx as their Moon offlane hero. That does mean, though, if they commit for a Bat that Squirt could get. I don't know, they've already come to the Void mm -hmm. here. Unless they do something fun with the Void, I yeah. wouldn't put it past Secret. And this void. is a team that will run, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. this team that will run Earth Spirit mid, like, they'll take a hero that seems to work in the meta, and they will play it to their kind of a game. So, yeah, I, I, I casually say, oh, it could uh, still get, like, a Misery Nyx, and they put Faceless Void oh, in a farming position. Posting most, interestingly, is, I think game one, Lone Drib was banned by OG. This time it was not banned or picked, and Secret had been, like, Picking Lone Druid for Misery and doing this like Lone Druid Spectre with like an Earth Spirit time and time again. They did that like three or four games in a row. It did feel like at some point, like they were picking it in games where they'd like, like when they were versing, I think it was Maneski, and it's like they've already won, they know they're going to beat this team. And it felt like a bit of a red herring where they were showing it again, even though it wasn't what they felt was the strongest strategy, just could reveal more of their actual like strats. So it was kind of like the saving strats, but. While winning while saving strats, so even Just better. Doesn't feel like an LD game for either team. Mm. Like, Faceless Void's Chrono makes it so sticky. You don't yes. want to pick up against a, or a Witch Doctor. It's not a Moon Hero either, at least yeah. not that I've seen. This yeah. is a crit hero, I want to say. Oh, yeah. This, I mean, it's, I guess that's the one hero that hasn't gotten talked about. They could still get Moon the, the Dark Seer now, too. Yes, absolutely. Dark Seer's been very successful, I feel, as all this tournament. For some teams more than others, like LGD RTKs had huge success on the era. But we're back at secret now, and uh, casual open witch doctor do. faceless void. They want to go real dirty. Uh, I don't know if Puppy plans on playing the witch doctor. Pi used to play a lot of Skywrath Mage. If you want to really get a vish, this crow combo plus the sounds pretty good against Voker. Uh, not good with the Spirit Breaker okay. though. And okay, they'll step off the grab the Death Prophet. Another Death Prophet versus Invoker match towards the mid. So. Mostly, yeah, Misery Void, and they need the Envy carry now. Ember Spirit, maybe, if they want to go for, like, their comfort picks. And OG's lineup isn't great at catching or shutting down Ember. Let's say they want to go for the Orchid Invoker, which doesn't seem to be, like, in vogue at the moment. Seems more about the Exhort Forward Spirit. Miracle's been going all, all about, like, the split push. Had that one insane game where he was just constantly solo split push. Impossible to catch, helping him off, but... I wonder if they would consider playing like Silencer thing on the side of OG2 for like. That would be mm. cool. I wouldn't mind Silencer. So good against break Faceless it, Void. And... Got some Witch Doctors. Or I don't know. I don't know. It's Fly after all. Ah, the Rubik. So it will be Moon on Spirit oh. Breaker. And... Okay. It was funny because when they were playing online tournaments, it, Moon would joke that he would just tell his team to pick a Spirit Breaker because he was playing from the US on King and. Like when he was playing at qualify, so he's just like, "Pick me Spirit Breaker," and like, it's like it was like the hero to play when you have high ping because you just charge in, and then right click, and that <laughs> as soon as your charge hits, like you you can preemptively cast your ultimate like based on your delay. Like there's not much like reactionary play you have to make on the hero. So it was the the moon hero of choice when he was lagging. He played it like ten games in a row apparently. So what's the significance though of the Rubik here? We look at potential stealing options. Mm. Yeah, you can take Time Walk, which is pretty nice. Chronosphere is usually a not not too. Be of snag, uh, not the easiest to get Death Ward with the Voodoo Restoration, of course, and Death Prophet can make a trade to get the Exorcism. What is the why the Rubik? You know, a lot of people are starting to consider Rubik. You know, he's a great flashy support and in the right game. You know, he could be so finicky that you have to get the right positioning in these fights to to get the most potential out of him. I'm wondering if they're considering kind of putting them more of a five and push into draft because that's where like the null field can help. Yeah. Negate some of that D push coming out from Cripsom. Like you have the Ford Spirits, you have the Venjora, and go for more of like a five man push, which could make could justify the Rubik pick, but it's not a whole lot of 
amazing steals that you can rely on. That's what you theoretically never be able to steal with Voodoo Restoration. Chronosphere is like an okay steal. It doesn't actually stop the Void from moving and it's not entirely reliable. Exorcism is great if you can catch it. So I actually don't think there was a... This did not strike me as a particularly good Rubik game. So I, I don't really have a... I don't have a good answer for you, Dota. Yeah, I'm also a bit... It doesn't... Even the bang. I'm kind of like, really? because it's bounty her into a spear breaker. Yeah. Uh, an invoker Ooh. who, you know, you never know, could end in a necro book invoker. And bounty her can't really do much from the outside of a chrono. Aside from, I guess you could up a lot of tracks and it's out of shuriken. But hey, another game, another drow ranger. So the dual lays, dual or a combo strat here coming out. Yeah. And to go back to the Rubik, now it makes sense because it will be to push that kind of push strat five man. You get to throw some null field in there. In the null field, you may even have a point or two in, if any. But it's a the Rubik can get some nice benefit from the right click damage. It's another rain port. Um, and it's a good support to protect the Drow Ranger and set up kills with the lift. So, so. the Rubik makes a lot more sense when you see Drow Ranger pick. 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Yep. The goal, the magic number here for, for OG. And the nice the, this thing is, like, they can lose a fight. And then Exorcism on and then they just push. And, like, with that Exorcism, the secret of very reliant on these long cooldown ultimates, perhaps, fight. And that's something that G can look to cap on. Well, we posed the question earlier today what, what kind of Western. Teams are really pulling out the more flanging. This is the second time we see it now coming up for man. Man, we're, we're the in last, like a like, range cores available to help with the chrono, I guess. It's a small range, but yeah. Kind of bizarre, like new era of Dota. Like traditionally, it's always been the Chinese teams who are slow to adapt, slow to pick up new heroes. Even more so when a new patch comes out, it was always the innovators or like the the European teams. And it's been the Chinese teams who brought Morphling in, brought Terra in. They've been, for the most part, in some ways, the trendsetters. Wait, another big hero that it was teams like LGD and Ehome who brought into the game, so... And just so many heroes just gone on the wayside, and to be honest, like, continue to question, like, why? Like, I already brought up the Wind Ranger, but what are, like, the Brood... ...mother and that. Heroes, you might be able to creep into a draft to just... Yeah. End no, the draft there's no right CIS there. team, no CIS team in MDL, yeah. so. But you know, like you, you need the your... right draft where they have like no dark seer, no mm. way to deal with the firelings, no way to deal with the push. Like, and it could be a you know, a dagger. But here yeah. we go, folks. It's game number two of this matchup. OG versus Secret. OG already have the game one victory here. They just need a win to secure their spot into the semifinals, where they're going to be set up to face LGD. Uh, lose this series will be knocked down into the lower bracket, where they will face. Either newbie or complexity. I think the yeah, important thing to know with this OG draft very much kind of like a pocket strategy. Uh, it's a bit cheesy with the put. I mean, to me, Drow Ranger is like the epitome of cheesy, a cheesy draft because the nature of the draft, Drow Ranger is you've got to win fast. This hero is by no means a late game carry. I, I don't even think you can like, classify Drow Ranger in carry in some ways because how bad the hero is in the late game. And oh, okay. they're going to be looking to abuse like the draw aura with the fort spirits with veg bonus damage is in insane physical damage that they get because it's applied by the venge hal as well and looking to just take the game to secret who gone fairly greedy with their draft so pi use some early movement to get a, a ward down towards the top river managed to not get caught by that sentry too which yeah. is important. and they will step away from the top let og pick up one and uh, this will secure the bottom rune for Secret. We will get it. He'll be late to the lane, no, uh, and no one's blocking the mid lane for him, so this could be a good start for the OG mid lane. Yeah. Miracle does go for the Fairy Eyes in the Evoke Quiver's Death Prophet matchup. Uh -huh. I just I just find it so I'm I mean I'm not a player. I don't even know how to explain this. Where I wish I like, thought yeah, with Quiver first come out, this is for invoker, right? Yeah. Like, I wish if someone like I could talk to like Blitz or someone and be like, dude, so you play a lot. Like, what's, what's the deal? Like, why, why is we not getting fairy fire on Invoker versus Death Prophet? Like, and, but here, Miracle does just to do. I mean, it's a very small difference, but watch him live because of a fairy fire. <laughs> yeah. In it's, this game, I think it's like a greedier thing. Like the safe options to get fairy fire for the heal, but if you can not get fairy fire, you just save yourself 150 gold, which quote unquote might go to waste. 
And here's Pai taking it back a chapter. He's back on his bounty hunter, doing bounty hunter things. Got the, the mid ward down. It was a bit of a ward. Yeah, it almost ward got ward. dewarded, but. But he got, he got the tango in real fast. Yep. And now Prit is kind of stuck on the defensive duty mm -hmm. towards the mid lane here. They know it's there, though, at least, which is something they can play around, but being forced to buy four sentries is never going to be fun. In the meantime, he'll take a business towards the bottom lane, which. Uh, you know, thankfully he, she has Rao by her side, because otherwise, uh, she has the uh, Vegetal Spirit rather by her side, because Drow on her own, not very good being able to get away, not the biggest escape mechanism, and usually not one to early commit for these, so, we'll see, but, alright, trying to force Mithri back, not the easiest task against this new Faceless Void, but I don't know how many times we've seen Misery play the, the new Void, and it seems like he's been kind of delegate to some yep. of his usual tricksters he's a really fun player to watch because he's so open and like his team just puts him on a new hero all the time Ooh. free fire there we go well save that answers your question live <laughs> all right <laughs> and they get the word denied oh my okay that's why you get very fun I lesson guess. maybe learned on we have well oh. look at that they got a new sentry for pie with a snap he's looking to go and he wants to get a he's hold of it. miracle but he's not getting it that's quickly a 2-0 sprint for OG at the start of this one, all breaking down up mid lane. Miracle is not the kind of player, especially when it's Invoker, that you want to give an early advantage to. Yeah. Oh boy. So and he, the races. Not just like with the mid lane, like you give him these early, early advantage, gets more points in the top so he lane. Can... They are going to be able to take down the spear breaker. Okay. Morphling chases on him and. He's not going to be able to charge out safety. Yeah. You've always got to worry about those Sunstrikes going to the sidelines as well. You've got separate magic missiles as well as the telekinesis, so... Pretty scary for these... The secret bottom lane more than this top lane, which is just a Spirit Breaker up top, but... If Puppy's trying to trade hits with Spirit Breaker, gets bashed, and suddenly a Sunstrike comes in, it could be a, a kill for OG that way as well. And, uh, on the return, Moon is charging towards bottom lane, but... I mean, it's just, you know... They're expecting Moon to probably be charging from somewhere. Yes. He's just killed, so... What is he? Yeah, he stopped in the pit. You know, waiting there for now. Maybe look for an opportunity to go for the mid lane instead. Between Rubik and Vir and the Spear Breaker, they might be able to get a takedown on this Lady Death Prophet. Yep. Lead him some early softening. They're gonna get the cold... Wow! Oh. Lift to the bottom ground, done for crit, man. And now this Soul Siphon... Oh, is it gonna broke. be enough? No, it's not! And we'll go to once more. Man, that Soul Siphon does work, and... Oh, hoo, hoo. oh the South cancelled by Chris. But miracle behind. Why creeping in there? But he doesn't <laughs> he want to overcommit he... because he's he there's is. a sentry there. He learned less than last time. Yeah, well over. Okay. Going close though. Spirit Breaker match was on cooldown from Roche Pit. He couldn't charge like, immediately. He got there. He didn't actually get there. Uh, even help with the kill, but I mean, uh, Death Prophet almost found a way. All set up from from crit man. He is yeah. forced to park in this mid lane, and he's already finding much more steps than you would suspect, like the bounty hunter would. And Moon has been kind of bullied out of his lane. He's now even looking to be a, a playmaker in the early phase here. Maybe, you know, just bank the fact that they're getting plenty of farm on the drow in the bottom lane, and now Invoker involved with all three kills, because they've happened all in the mid lane. But he doesn't really need to worry about it now. He comes. Suddenly, wild charge. Three straight takedowns onto we uh, We three. Three takedowns. Oh man. Hard life in the mid lane here. This Death Prophet is being put into a hurt locker right now. Oh. Ouch. And that's secret just don't have that like support who can really care protect him. Like be it something like a dazzle or no take or whatever it may be. The bounty hunter is meant to be like the aggressive support who creates opportunities through like he's not the defensive one you can save him, he's the aggressive one you can set up kills for, which so far isn't happening and Drew Ranger, one of those very vulnerable in lane, so Bounty spent a bit of time in the bottom as well, which isn't really working. Secret just don't have the early game kill potential with a hero like Void and Bounty together. Oh, Bounty's okay. doing nothing at the start, then. Yeah. There, something and, is wrong. And Void's just been jungling with his Iron Talon. I saw him earlier just on the mini map. He's been at this camp for a lot of this early game. In the early game for Secret, like, they're getting like a slap arm advantage, it seems. Oh, okay. Well, experience advantage. They're more split around the map with the net worth overall lead led by OG. So as Misery finds his bit of recovery, we see, you know, Moon has returned back to his lane a bit. Bottom here, Pilot definitely happy to soak up some XP through this camp, which Veg has been stacking for herself. She had her own bit of solo XP. And the crit continue to flutter around this invoker at lane, man. They are just 
getting everything he could ask for. And Secret are just trying to find a farm for themselves. Misery now dancing around just really deep into their jungle. I really feel like they need to get something done soon, but it, it's until he's got level 6 and has Chronosphere in play, it's not really much he can do. I mean, the big thing going for Secret is, yeah, yeah. I mean, Envy's farm great in the top lane on his Mufling here. But uh, oh, you have the lineup that is turn it up and go. And they just got level six on Dro, which is actually pretty big timing with the huge boost in damage you get on your precision or that. That's a lot of DPS to your overall draft and line. What's so. the build up here? Three into the aura. Yeah. He does one into the. Yep. Cold Rowan. Okay. Magic missile is gonna hit high, but able to get the uh, shadow walk off. Zoning so they can secure this tower, I guess. Good sitting back, but I think bounty. Ooh, bounty! Oh, wow. You dare go for it. Oh, Pops out. He's, he he can't do it with the shovel walk on cooldown. He's just guaranteed kill. Or he can't. He may just trade his life for a possible deny. So we saw this from E Home uh, when they had their match against EG earlier in, against a morphling, and that was the the first. And then they went right to each lane, going you know if, this, if it was the same case here, OG go top down that tier one, then mid tier one. And they seem like a uh, bit slated, they were inside the base here. So, uh oh, meatball, deafening blast, and fade bolt. That, that damage output just from the air spells with the right clicks of Invoker. 177 right click damage. Fairy fire, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Without yeah. that fairy fire, he'd be at 177 instead of 179. That's whew, made all the difference. Thank you, Drow. What? Very helpful on that one. As if the wasn't mighty enough. And okay, they got the pie, but they changed. We're looking to go for misery. Gets the time walk off, but it's not gonna be enough to save. Again, thank you, Drow. <laughs> Man, they all just hit so hard. Okay, here's we now. Not having that no mid lane. Exorcism, though. Taking down four times. Are you gonna kill here? Moon says nothing's gonna come easy for. You. I lane. also will make it out. Oh. Well, mid lane, look at this. There's suddenly already knocking down that tier 2 tower. Morphs is not fight ready. He's like, I can kind of farm top and split put, but. It's like, guys, I have to put our link in here. What? What do you want me to do? I can't do anything about this. Oh, they don't even have double forts. They, they just got like. another tower. They took from the mid tier 1. They got the tier 2. They're just oh, running all back. They're keeping back it away. Coconut hit on the crit. Oh, wow. A convenient no tail here. I don't think they're going to get to catch on anything. They forced all the mid lane and. Oh, gee, they or, going back in? Oh, oh, says, let's go, but I think they're like, no, no. <laughs> we got what we needed here, we got the tower, get back, then we go top lane next. Well, no, you, uh, like, look, Miracle's bedtime, it's approaching, we're gonna end this one fast. It's already like 10.30. We gotta go quick, and nine minutes in, taking a T2 tower mid. I wonder if, like, Invoker's just gonna go, like, say, let's go neck with three or something. Like, this is the kind of game yeah. If you want to go for that super fast all-in push, which your draft is about, it's not a bad option. But there's, there's so many options. The, the Yules is good even in a push threat just because you catch hero, you burst him down, and so your push gets a whole lot easier because you've taken the Faceless Void and there's no Chronosphere to worry about, for example. You've taken Death Prophet out, there's no Crypto Omnis coming out, though. Plenty of options for G as far as like, itemization and form the Invoker. Oh, it looks like going for like the early Jedzakla, go for like an SM1 here. This like, this is not like a game, like the, the game we saw earlier on needed BKB, so you don't need BKB NCC's heroes right now. You can just go for pure stats and push, and it's going to be a Drums Invoker with a Buckler. So, Crimson Guard or Mech coming out from Invoker, and that doesn't say we're all on the push. Yeah, that is like... Is it, what, wow. what's the recipe for on the, uh, can we check that recipe? In the stash? Thank you, sir. Headdress. Headdress. So we'll be mech, not mech? the Crimson Guard. Joker. I mean, who else really is going to be yeah, getting sure. it, you know? So it's yeah, you're right. that's pedal to the metal push right now. It's like okay. a, that's about to build right there. Oh, oh. good night. Leads to a swap save inside the Chrono here, coming out from Fly, and that's going to be the kill of Misery, a 1-1 okay. one -one trade, one that is for the better of OG, and now oh. Tail says, let's... Let's consider moving in. Was a track kill. Oh, nice. He stole. Okay, replicate on the drow. So now that is a aura Bennett for secret. So good grab for envy. Yep. A really, you know, good replicate throughout the whole game. It scales very nicely. Hell, you can even throw that replicate to a different lane, and it will split push on its own. You know, that's if the game uh, <laughs> continues that much longer. Seeker are gonna be able to hold their own. And we saw the way EG dealt with this was by just getting tons of kills. And Secret's draft, if they can get tons of kills, will be able to deal with this strategy because they get track mic from it. But 
Yep. I don't think they have the same tools that EG had with it can get a big fight when track kills that that could be a big point envy. Point. Yeah, it's envy. Morphling is in big trouble and is gonna be melting apart right now and they're looking to go for Wii. They both just instantly fall. Like a house of cards right there. The rest of Secret scrambling to make a way to safety. OG are thirsty for it. They know they Stolen get a couple of fields, They can get it. <laughs> well, crit even just... Oh, that, that, that evens up the track gold. It's like, okay, you guys think you can get back with track gold? We're further ahead with our own track gold. They could always double back and, you know, is the Roche up? They get the Roche, but they're just like, we got this advantage. Morphing's out, and right. so is the Death Prophet. We could do work fast. Can cancel TP. E home got a 13 minute rex. We're gonna do 12. We're gonna we're gonna oh, E home. Gee, you know, just, like yeah. wow. We we're gonna, oh, oh, E home are the only ones who can run the pro quick dress. It's good. Good counter morph play. I mean, even though E home were not successful with, I guess you could just see the potential. Yes. Swap back. Why is he able to get a hold of Misery? Misery just gets all that luck back as Moon wants to commit in. OG not happy with this fight so far. Moon very low get the drums and they're looking to retreat misery is looking to make chase but oh man those four spirits they hit yep. they hit hard <laughs> he's like i don't want that and they gotta get away oh they're gonna be very happy and they disengage without losing anyone to the yeah. track and i want to cost an exorcism, exorcism was committed yeah, yeah. the win that was popped but and secret need to be careful like how they use their ultimates because ideally for them they want to have the ultis together they're far up behind they need to have chrono with exorcism so now yeah, if OG go for a push, yeah, that's courtesy, but you've got no exorcism. You need really, like, all the pieces of the yeah, puzzle Roche. for secrets and defense. And, yeah, we mentioned Roche. Easy taking yeah. for OG. They've got plenty of damage. I wonder if they saw the yeah. exorcism use. I'm sure they did. They're like, we don't have to worry about yeah. that. And, like, the, I mean, the net worth of these OG heroes, Tower Gold, again, is just going to be looking, looking pretty good right now. Why don't we go ahead and check out that now? I'd like to see where MV is compared to the others. On that net worth, but you see them tickling at that Roche, and oh, it's <laughs> there. <Yep. laughs> this aura power coming out right now. Is they it? didn't have the they didn't have the Venge Spirit on Ehome, did? They? That's my that's no. probably what they, that's what we're missing. That extra aura, that extra power, that one plus. Both ladies. What's Invoker? We have lads or some coming now as well. They're really going all out. Push. Like this is like they're showing like secret. This is how you do like the the all in or push strats. Like you guys, you guys only half did it. Well, they, it secret didn't even really push, get a chance to push last game into the anti mage and punish it. But this is this is why I think we're gonna see more and more teams start to do with all these morphlings, anti mages, terror blades. Like these kind of hard late game carries get picked up, going for these more early game push oriented strats. Draw typically like that CIS specialty. We didn't get. <laughs> CI's team's going against it's a, the China team. It's a team, mech you know? Vlad's invoker. How often do you see that? Drums, mech Vlad's. We are all in, boys. We are, it's 35 minutes. OG's saying we 25 minutes. Let's, let's set the time for earlier. With I wonder who's these. making that kind of a call. If people nice. tell you fly like, hey, I'm going to go with this, or if guys like, don't get any normal invoker stuff. You get this, and we can get this win that much yeah. faster. I mentioned something on between them. Either during the drafting phase or like as the game develops, like, Miracle either asks him, like, do I get, what, what do you suggest, if I suggest something, if Miracle has some say, like, if he doesn't agree, he's probably not going to buy it. Like, it's generally, like, what if, if the captain's, like, adamant, like, you have to get it in that, but. All right, yeah. Classic Soul Ring pick up from NV. The game's looking Jeez. a bit tough. Whoa. So, slightly unexpected. Guarantees, I guess, you have the mana to, like, I mean, replicate it. Feels... No, they... They have got secret have got to expect that OG yeah. are going to be looking for a final blow here. Oh, yeah. the rush, they're coming in. Scrap together what you can of a defense and try to make a hold. Get a big team fight. If you get the tracks out and you can get the job done, you, you might be rewarded with a window to kind of, you know, make the first steps toward a bit of a comeback here. But if OG walk away with this with an easy set of racks, then you might have to just kind of turn over at that point. Now, they're going to be going in the triple here, but he still has all that utility. Looks like he's reserving a bit of it for the second half. It will be popping out the mech right there, and he just starts going over here on Envy. Envy is going to be forced to step back. They get the pull on the wall, and Weehaw goes, goes down. down. Hard gate for him. Commitment on in. They're still not able to bring down Miracle's first life. Death Ward coming out from Puppy here. He gets a good position, but actually will be cut out and taken down. Three already go down from the side of Secret. So the Aegis, too. The Earth is going to heal Miracle back up, so they're going to have to dish through all that HP. And again, no tail surviving in the back. He's kind of the main target. Only he didn't have Aegis, which was 
Overall, a pretty good idea for secret. They don't overcommit on the invoker who's got Aegis. Go for the squishier drove, the Aegisless drove, but OG's bad man just too powerful and 60 minutes in, full in of Rex, looking for a second. All right, this is it for Secret. You want to stay alive and move on in the upper bracket. You're going to have to make a difference here. Let's see what they can do about it. They're still trying to take down the first. I have to get the time dilation off, so that could lead to the Aegis fall. It looks like it will. Oh, so but Moon misery. steps in. He goes right from three mid. He's going to be taken down. And now the full siphons begin to come out from Wii. Putting himself into the fray right here. Trying what he can do, but he just goes down so fast. Now they look to get a hold of Pilot. Swap him back into trouble. Puppy goes down, and that will be game. OG, get it done in about 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. Really show what the Stro lineup can do. E well. got to, you know, they kind of set the bar, but then OG jumped right over it. That was, that was something. When we've had some very quick games here, and then we've had some very, like, it's been, like, just extremities here. I've had the really short 15 to 20.